Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So in this video, I'm going to cover the most important proposition, which is proposition 12. I'm skipping ahead because as you all know, I've been working on uh, the propositions in book one. And uh, this uh, proposition is all about measure. It teaches one whatever one needs to know about all the arithmetic operations. And if you can't understand this, then you really can't understand mathematics because uh, this here is the basis of all the arithmetic operations that were transferred through to algebra using the abstract unit. And uh, what I'd like to explain to you now is that Euclid didn't do a very good job of this uh, because his explanation is very difficult and also I'm convinced that he should have written book six before book five. You might say, well, hey, uh, book six needs the definition of ratio, but to define ratio is very simple. And uh, I think this could have been done as at the beginning of book six. Um, I'm really sorry that Euclid uh, didn't do it that way. But in any case, I'm going to explain to you now and also provide links to previous videos on book five and proposition 12 that include uh, all the theory of arithmetic from this proposition, as well as geometric and multiplication and division uh, using this uh, proposition, including all the other operations, and also an introduction to circular geometry, which is known as trigonometry. So if Euclid had stuck to similar triangles to prove this, the proof would indeed have been a lot easier. So let's look at the proof as we see it here. So what this uh, proposition says is that if you have a series of any amount of ratios, as you see here, A, B, in proportion to CD, in proportion to EF, etc. Then if you take all the antecedents, uh, A, C, E, and G, they are uh, in a ratio to, or in proportion to B, D, F, and H, which are the consequence. And so this ratio is equal to each one of these, and each one of these is equal to themselves. Uh, moreover, the calculations that you see here are merely to help you understand, because this proposition doesn't use numbers it's based on it's based purely on uh, magnitudes which are not numbers okay so if Euclid had used similar triangles as you see over here in a circle then you could you could see the the truth of of this proposition simply by uh, simply by varying the, the the similar triangles and and seeing that and of course, by the way, even though this is strictly speaking not true, uh, it shows you that you cannot have a zero magnitude, okay? And of course, there is no such thing as a, a, a number that describes no magnitude because a number by definition is a name given to a measure that describes a magnitude or a size. So I'm going to give you a link to this applet and what I recommend is that you download it and study it very carefully. Uh, so the important thing about this now is that you can define all the operations of arithmetic. Uh, difference, addition, division and multiplication in that order, by the way, because that's how you realize all the operations of arithmetic. And it's very easy to see. So now if we want to see how to do division and multiplication, we could simply choose any one of these as the unit. Okay, so I could choose this green line here as the unit. And if I chose it as one, then I wouldn't have had to divide by this number. It would just simply be this, this the length of this green segment multiplied by the blue segment would give me this dotted blue segment, okay? And obviously division is the other way around. This dotted blue segment divided by the segment would give me this. Right. The only reason I'm dividing by this number here is that it's not uh, equal to one, but it's it's our chosen unit for this particular example. So now this proposition 
is very important because it's all about measure. Okay, it's all about how we realize the science of mathematics. Mathematics is a science. Okay, it's the queen of all sciences, and it's about measure and number. So this is the most important uh, proposition in all of Euclid's elements. And I decided to just cover it once again quickly in detail. And I'm going to provide a very detailed uh, informative section on this video so that you can study all the previous videos as well as all the connected information. As you all know, I am working through book one and propositions uh, in book one or trying to work through a lot of them. Right now, my right eye is hurting me terribly and I'm not able to focus very well. That's just one of my thorns in the flesh. I have many others. But in any case, this is all I wanted to discuss in this uh, particular video. If you have any questions or comments, write them down in the comment section and I will attempt to get to answer them in time. This is the New Calculus Channel. My name is John Gabriel. Till next time, goodbye.